Hi friends, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. We've got the Sanren U Asika today. Titanium 154cm in two sizes. I've only got the small version. This is in their 7000 series, meaning the blade is about seven centimeters, two and three quarter inches. And, uh, you know, 8000 series knives have got eight centimeters. 9,000, guess how long the centimeters? Uh, and the 10,000, or 1,000 actually, which is counterintuitive if you just go through the numbers, is not one centimeter, it's 10 centimeters. So that's a big knife. So this comes in 10 centimeters or seven centimeters. And uh, I couldn't afford the biggest one. You know, I live on a disability pension and I have to sell almost everything that I buy but I love this knife so much, I'm going to be keeping it uh, for a couple of reasons. And uh, if you want to know more about it, stick around for the review. If you want to support the channel, you can go to patreon.com cce or click join down below. Uh, it's right down there beside the subscribe button. If you haven't subscribed yet, it's in blue. You just click it. And if you support the channel, you do have some good perks. Like one of you guys wins a knife every month. Guys, generic means male or female it doesn't matter to me although i don't i only have a few female viewers that uh, at least that leave comments so uh, welcome everyone and you also get first dibs on all my knife sales you get 48 hours access before i invite anybody from the general public to buy knives that i've reviewed and uh, tuned up i tune up all the knives before i sell them so we've got a nice knife Remember, it's named the Asika 7411-TZ. If you're interested in this design, it's a cool looking frame lock. You're gonna wanna stick around for the full review. Keep watching. Let's take a look at this thing. There it is. Let's do our typical size comparison with the Ontario Rat 1. That isn't a very big knife. It's not super tiny either. You look at the cutting edge. Look at that. You've got less than a... Model 1's got less than a half inch more. Well, right around a half inch more cutting edge than this has. And that's it. I am a big fan of this knife. Like I said, 154cm. We've got a straight back here. We've got a swedge that terminates before the tip. So it helps keep some strength on that tip. We've got a bit of a belly on this leading edge. And then there is a transition when they ground it right there. There's a bit of chocolate chip on my fingernail there. I had a chocolate chip muffin with my breakfast today. I don't usually have sweet stuff with my breakfast, or hardly ever, but if you spotted that little bit there, that was chocolate chip. Honest, it was chocolate chip. Uh, you know, belly there, and then a fairly straight section, and they do have a transition right there, and I'm not fond of it at all. Since we've got a single main bevel, when I sharpen this thing, I'm just going to sharpen it straight through, so it's going to have a rounded belly right there, a, a transition right there. I think it's going to look better. If they had a distinct line there, like on, you know, a, where's that tanto again? you know, a certain grind here and a different grind there, then a transition's important. But this guy just doesn't look right to me at that spot right there. No big deal. We've got a back swept plunge and we've got an elongated sharpener's choil here, but it comes out far enough so that you can sharpen right to the end and not risk going into the plunge at all. I like that a lot. It's a big deal because most knives these days uh, that have sharpener's choils, at least budget knives, the sharpener's choil doesn't pass the end of the plunge. And so you end up having a section there that, you know, goes wide. And whenever you sharpen it, you're in the plunge and it's just a mess. So that's quite nice. Not too big of badging right there. Stay ready for more San Ren Mew SRM. So when they made it a Western brand SRM, they decided to go with stay ready for more for their, for their SRM. I don't know what Sanren Mu actually means in Chinese, so who knows, maybe it means something like that. We've got a rounded spine with some jimping there, 
There's enough texture there to help a little bit, but there's not an awful lot of grip on that. And then on this side, up there on the uh, flats, we have 154CM, and there's their triangular SRM logo, 7411-TZ, and the serial number. Now, take a good look at that serial number on mine. Yes, I've got issue number one. This is definitely staying in my permanent collection. Ain't nobody buying this off me, because first off, I love the size of these. And this is production number one. So that's great. I don't really like having a serial number on there on the, on the bevel, but you know I like that I've got proof that this one's number one. Uh, the pivot, we're going to have ball bearings in there. I'll show you those in a little while. There's SRM logo again. So they got their logo three times on this knife, which is a little overkill, if you ask me. Yeah, since they have it here, I wish they didn't have it anywhere else. You know, you know this side could have been perfectly clean. Or maybe not here or here, just right there on the flat would have been best. This size would have fit right there. That would have been best. So pivot's pretty good. The flipper tab, it's got a little bit of jimping on the front of it there. Great for light switch method and pretty good for off on an angle. There's a good detent on this. Works quite well. It's not quite as good in the left hand because you don't have, um, you know, a pocket clip over here to hold on to, but it works fairly well in the left hand as well. You know, you can open and close it just fine in the left hand. The uh, lock bar insert has an over travel stop on it and you've got a steel hitting steel on the blade for the lock. Lock up, very good, I like that. And the uh, pivot has a pivot collar. That's uh, probably anodized stainless steel, that blue anodization. I'm not fond of that blue color because it tends to wear off easily, but there's not a lot of it on here, so that's okay. I do have a little bit of some lines showing up on the knife because I do actually carry my knives when I review them. I think on that picture right there, if you've got a high res screen, you might be able to see a little bit of uh, some rubbing that I did on the titanium, leaving some lines right there. I'm not too upset about that because I use them. You got some uh, um, terracing kind of milled lines here, here, and here. We've got a backspacer that's got the lanyard hole in it. I love that spot for the lanyard hole because your paracord can come out the back that way and it doesn't get big this way. Pocket clip. We've got a deep carry pocket clip that I believe they changed after they did the design and before they started, you know, full production. They changed the pocket clip. I'm saying that because, uh, here, let me use this other knife, <laughs> another 7,000 series knife. It's a big tip down pocket clip, uh, which I'm not that fond of. It's just too big of a pocket clip for this knife, but the knife's pretty nice. There's a big hole right there. You know, part of the milled out section. They didn't need to have that there. That tells me they had a different pocket clip in mind for this. Maybe it was a titanium pocket clip, but it just didn't work out or something. And this is, you know, more of a classic pocket clip for them. So there's that. Oh, I forgot to double check. Uh, I'll post a picture right now of the pocket clip of the big brother of this. We've got T6 screws there. And I believe this is going to be, yeah, that's a T8 here but the rest are T6s. And this side, you know, it just got flush pins. So they're probably both D-shaped pins. So here is a close-up of it taken apart. They've got races on there. That's a hardened steel washer, basically, for the ball bearings to run on. They use a light grease. I'm gonna wipe this out. I clean that off. And uh, I'm going to put in oil instead of grease, a nice light oil. And ceramic detent ball right there. Probably won't get close-up pictures of this taken apart, unless I got lots of extra time, because uh, it does take a lot of time to do that. You can tell they've got just a little cutaway right there 
for you to get your thumb in there to lock release. There's that D-shaped pivot pin right there. There is a little bit of thread locker in there. You can see the white residue on the screw. The little body screw, there's a little bit of blue on there from some Loctite, not a big problem. And here's the back pin. It's got a little flat side on it too. So like I said, it's not spinning. And the titanium backspacer, quite nice. And of course the close up of the blade. So very simple construction, well-made and very functional. Oh, the washers, there you go. We've got tiny little uh, stainless steel balls, uh, ball bearings for the uh, washers. A decent design. Now I'm going to put it back together and we're going to go over all the sizes, dimensions, weights, all that stuff. I just realized I had forgotten a couple things before we do the measurements. Blade alignment. I didn't cover that. It's not quite perfect. It's a tiny bit off to this side. Pretty good though. And uh, that is about it. Let's go over the sizes, weights, all that stuff. It weighs 56 grams. Two ounces that's what it weighs. That's quite nice. The factory sharpness, I measured it on the flat section and on the belly here. It averaged out to 85 bests, which is very sharp, but the sharpening that they did is not so good, uh, especially on this leading edge here. The uh, cutting edge length, straight line from tip to the heel, 70.1 millimeters, 2.76 inches. And the blade length itself from tip to the closest spot on the handle is 69.7 millimeters. So right close to 70 millimeters as it says on the box, 7411. Uh, that's 2.74 inches. So good size that's legal just about everywhere in the world, isn't it? The blade thickness is 2.62 millimeters. That's 0 0.103, so just over a tenth of an inch. The blade depth, it's biggest this way, 21.1 millimeters, 0.831 inches. How thin is it behind the grind? 0.28 millimeters, which is 11 thousandths of an inch thin. Very thin. The kind of use for this knife, that's just great. The grind angles. Let's talk about this main section first. 17.1 degrees. 19.4 degrees and then on this side uh, this main section here is pretty even 17.5 degrees but this side here it's pretty badly done the mid section here is around 17.4 degrees remember this was 17.1 so that's good but there's a bit of a change at the tip here it's just not good 21.1 degrees but you can see it on the close-up that transitions just bad and they did it again right here on the heel of the blade. Again, around 21 degrees here as well. Just at the two ends of that main section. So whoever sharpened this did a, not a very good job on this. But being as thin as it is, I'm going to clean this whole thing up to, I don't know, 16, 17, 18 degrees, something around there. And do the whole thing and make that a continuous sweep so you don't see that transition point. The handle, the handle length is 89.6 millimeters, 3.53 inches. The uh, grip area is about 7.5 centimeters, right at three inches. The handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip or anything, just on the flats, that is 9.12 millimeters. That's 0.359 of an inch. And the handle depth, uh, the widest point is right here at the end. That is 19.2 millimeters, 0.756 of an inch. And when the knife is closed, the widest point is at here, the flipper, 27.1063 of an inch. And the total length of this knife from one end to the other is 161 millimeters, 6.34 inches. That is not bad. What are my overall thoughts and feelings of this knife? I am a big fan of this knife. Yeah, 
sharpening is where it lets me down again, but that's par for the course, isn't it? Yet that can be fixed too. The design is just very nice. You know, the pocket clip, yeah. I wish it was different. I wish it didn't have T6 uh, uh, screws because those strip out so easily, especially on uh, those flush screws. But, you know, it looks good. It feels good. It's functional. It's got, you know, that sort of premium feel to it. And it doesn't totally break the bank. I would love to get one of the full size ones. It's just, you know, outside of my bank. I can't afford, I can't afford it really. And I review budget knives mostly. Just the odd time I review a knife that's over you know, 100 bucks. And actually just the odd time I review a knife that's over $60. Because uh, I like to buy, I like to review knives that are under that price range. Now, sometimes I you give that price range after the 10% discount at White Mountain Knives. And, uh, you know, this one is certainly within that range. It's $69.95 out of the box, save 10%, $62.95. So I went just a little over my budget on this one already. Uh, that equals about 79 Canadian, by the way at least as of March 22, 2022. So that's why I don't have the big one, although I'd really love to have the big one. San Remu uh, has for, was for a lot of years my favorite budget knife company, and uh, they do a lot of really good work. But in the last five years, the industry has really changed. There's a lot of new knife companies that make really nice stuff. So they're definitely one of my top knife companies but not necessarily the top anymore. So if you're in the market for one of these, White Mountain Knives is currently sold out. I'll leave links down below for other places where you can buy them, but I think the best price I found anywhere still really was White Mountain Knives. And on the page for this, there's a little orange link that says notify me. Just above it, you type in your email address, click the notify me button, and you'll get an email as soon as they're back in stock. And don't hesitate. I think they're going to sell out really quick, even the second time. So thanks for watching my video. Thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. And bye for now.